So my husband and I started talking about planting some apple trees. This was kind of an off-the-cuff decision. I knew that it was time to put apple trees in the ground if I was going to try to grow some because you need to plant them when they're dormant. You don't want to have a lot of growth coming off of the tree when you are planting them. So um, I saw a couple at the home improvement store and I knew enough about planting apple trees to know I needed two varieties so that they would cross pollinate. Now apple trees are considered self-fertile which means the flowers have male and female parts on them but in order to get a really good harvest it is always recommended that an apple tree be planted with a different variety that also opens and blooms at the same time to get a really good harvest. Now I'll leave a chart below the video so that you can check out um, what kind of varieties are available that open at the same time. Apples grow great in most zones in the U.S., um, best between zone 5 and 8, and then if you find what's called a hardy variety, a lot of times those will do well between zones 3 and 5. So if you don't know your zone, I'll leave a link for you down below the video as well. So if you want a good recommendation for what grows well in your area, I would recommend calling your county extension office, and they will most likely have some varieties that do well for your area. If you live where you have a mild winter, um, you can probably get away with planting your apple trees in the fall. However, most of us who have cold winters need to do this in the early spring. So once you've selected two varieties, you'll want to go ahead and select your location in your yard where you want your trees. My trees are what are called full size. There are also dwarf varieties out there, but um, I am not growing those. I'm growing the real deal here. So um, I had to look around my yard and look at sun direction. Apple trees need six, at least six hours of full sun each day. Even more would be better. So I had to make sure where I was going to put my trees would be somewhere that it would not shade my other garden areas. So once you've selected the sites in your yard, you'll need to have your two varieties within 50 feet of each other. I'm actually planting mine about 20 feet apart. So after you've selected your tree locations, you may want to go ahead and call 811 and that is a service where they will schedule to come out and check for any kind of publicly managed utility lines and they'll mark those so that you won't dig into them. And there's no charge for that. I'm pretty sure that's paid for by your tax dollars. <laughs> so I can only share with you my experience planting these trees. My soil is very heavy clay where I was planting and so it was very necessary for me to amend the soil and so what I'm adding is just a little bit of peat moss with some composted cow manure and I put about um, three parts compost to about one part peat so you may not need to add much peat to yours I do suggest that you use some rich compost however um, I just needed some peat to help loosen up this clay soil. So you'll need a few pieces of equipment to get started planting your tree. So I have my soil amendment in a wheelbarrow along with a shovel. I like to use a wading pool whenever I'm doing this type of work to keep my work area nice and tidy. And a water hose. And of course your fruit trees. So because my soil is so heavy and compacted clay soil, I wanted to make sure to get a really big hole here. So that called for my backup, that would be my husband, <laughs> to get out there with the shovel and dig me a really big hole. I guess it was about four feet in diameter when we were done with it. Um, my son also helped out a lot. So what my son is doing here is crumbling up the hard clay soil into the soil amendment. So we have half of native soil with half of the soil amendment. And we want to make sure that it's not real clumpy because, you know, this is clay and it's real hard. So we made sure to try to get that as fine as we could. And so here is the nice deep hole. You want to make sure that your hole is at least twice the size of the root ball of the tree. We made sure the hole was extra big because we need to have drainage around that root ball. So the soil here looks really good. It's real nice and fine and it's time to plant the tree. 
so we checked for the depth of the hole and it looked like it was a little bit deeper than I would prefer we want to have that root ball at the soil line level so we backfilled it a little bit we put a little bit more soil right there in the hole so it would raise up that root ball a little bit and again this has kind of been loosened up so this was the right height for us so I went ahead and watered that in real well and in goes the apple tree and now we can just fill it in with our combination of the soil amendment and the clay soil the sun was setting and then we still had a lot more to do so we mixed up a little bit more soil amendment with some more of the clay and realized that we still needed a lot more so that was going to wait until the next morning so the next morning i wrapped up the job I added a little bit more of the soil amendment with some more compost till everything was nice and level and there you go so now half of my job was done and now it was time to stake the tree and I read that it's real important to stake your fruit trees because if you don't the tree could be tipped over and this is because the root ball is really much smaller than the tree. The tree can be very top heavy such as your stems and once it starts to fill in with leaves and then possibly fruit it, a good little wind can just tip it right over because it's going to take a while for that root system to get established. So I think it's important at least from what I read to make sure you stake those fruit trees down. So I went digging through my garage to try to find some supplies to stake down the tree. I found some wooden stakes and some wood screws which were really a little bit too long but they did the trick I also found some concrete rebar which might help I need to have this um, staked down I read for about a year so I needed to make sure I had this secured for you know a good time so I took my concrete rebar and I went in at an angle and I'm doing this because it's easier to drive it into that clay soil I certainly wouldn't be able to get that wooden stake driven into the clay soil as deep as I am this concrete rebar. Hindsight, I probably really didn't even need to use the wooden stake in addition to the rebar, but um, I think it's easier to tie the string onto the wooden stake versus the rebar. So I just duct taped that wooden stake to the uh, rebar. I already had my two screws drilled into the wooden stake and then one other thing that I read is that you really don't want to have a piece of you know nylon string or wire or whatever it is you're using to stake your trees you don't want to have that rubbing up against the tree it could uh, injure the tree so I decided to use just a couple of pieces of cloth I hope these will hold up over the summer and I tied those on there and then secured them with some nylon string and reinforced the string on the back of those wooden stakes onto the screws to make it really nice and tight we want to make sure we're holding down that root ball into the soil so that it has good contact. You don't want any air pockets in there and you want to make sure it's draining well as I mentioned because if you don't let it drain well it could cause root rot when water just sits down right there by the root system. And then I put a bag of mulch around it to keep it nice and moist. I made sure to move some of that mulch out around the base of the tree so that I can get water down in there. And I've just been keeping it watered about once a week and so I was so happy that just a couple of weeks later I started to see some little apple blossoms popping out all over both trees so they were opening up at the same time just as I had read they would on the little chart that I checked out online so I hope to give you some updates on how my apple trees are doing here in the future if you have any questions I'll sure try to um, answer them for you. I'm not an expert apple grower at this point, but maybe in a few years I will be. So thank you so much for watching and y'all have a beautiful day.